Goedemiddag, good afternoon. What a wonderful place to talk about prisons, a zoo. <laughs> but I can tell you, most of these animals are better off than a lot of prisoners worldwide. It is not serious that you ask me to resume my story of 25 years in 18 minutes. I may hope that you will call me when I still have one minute left. Okay, thank you. You may think, why, for God's sake, that man want to make it into a prison when most of the inmates try to get out? Well, we have to go back to 1987. When I arrived in Chile during the, the dictatorship of Pinochet, and I was going to work with uh, street kids, glue-sniffing street children. But very soon, most of them ended up in the prison. And then I was asked to set up the workshops that we launched in the slum areas in the prison. I confess that in the beginning, I had a real hard time. But then I discovered that complete new world of prisoners as human beings. And I said, I have to tell the world, I have to show this face of prisoners, how they help me to be a better person. And I said, if I want to gain some credibility to share this with, with people, I have to live it from within because I worked till five o'clock and then went home. But what would it be to stay overnight? What is this food about? And I knocked at the door of the director and I asked him if I could stay for a while. Hermano Juan, he said. The first time in 25 years of my career that someone comes up with that request. Problema, problema, because I have to justify that everyone who's locked up has committed a crime. Why don't you make it a bit easier? You commit, can be a small crime. And I said, do you have a proposal? Oh yes, he said, you can steal a chicken. I said, what do I get for stealing a chicken? Lo minimo, lo minimo. I said, yeah, what's the minimum sentence? They won't keep you here for more than five years. <laughs> I thought that it would be a dream forever. But when I came back to Belgium, and when I was asked to visit the Latinos and later the other foreigners in the prison of Leuven, I felt that dream come up again. I have to live it from within. My first idea was to stay for one year here in a prison. But then the guy from Russia, he said, Jan, if you want to mention something about TB, tuberculosis in prisons, then you have to make it to Russia. And the guy from Colombia, he said, do you want to talk about corruption? Then make it back to Latin America. So I changed the idea. And for three years, I wrote to embassies and organizations, and then I left. And I always say, I think I've seen hell, heaven as well. Do you mind if I take you first to hell and we come back through heaven? We can do that according to a few ish issues that you see in, the most, in most of the prisons, overcrowded prisons. The first prison where I stay overnight is the prison of Kigali in Rwanda, built for 2,000 persons, yet we were nearly 7,000. Everyone could stay at 40 centimeters. Haiti. We were 18 in one cell, 10 square meters. Some of them were there for five, seven, eight years, standing on that very same square meter. We had one bucket for our needs. So no wonder health is a big thing. Guy from Russia, he, he had told me, but then I entered in those prisons in Russia where over 
of the inmates had TB. AIDS, I was in these prisons in South Africa. 95%, 95% of the inmates have AIDS. You know that in most of the African prisons, the family has to take food over to the prison. The system doesn't provide. No wonder. And there amongst these people, starving, no food, no water. The first time was in Burkina Faso. We were 200 guys locked up and there was no water. There was a well at two k's from the prison. And every morning, a few of us were allowed to get some water, two glasses per person. You learn how to take a shower in Africa, one glass. But if you were allowed to take a shower today, then you knew that you had to wait for another four or five months. There are rules, systems, that go far beyond imagination. I stayed in a prison in Bangkok, 300 guys sentenced to death, waiting for their execution. All of them had a chain of eight Ks between their ankles. Japan, did you know that Japanese prisoners are not allowed to talk? Dubai. Some of my fellow inmates were missing a finger, a hand. If you steal a chicken there, you pay it with a finger. There is a horrible culture in prisons, whether in the United States, in Belgium, or in Guatemala. You know, inmates consider those who, who are there, for instance, for a hold up. Wow, they are considered as the tough guys. And that you have those people who committed sexual crime. And if they are not raped by the other inmates, guards will do. Like in Guatemala, they raped them with the stick of a broom. Now I told you, it's not only hell. I've discovered heaven in prisons. And first of all, with the inmates, we can learn so much from their patience, from their hospitality. I do voluntary work here in the Begijnerstraat, in the prison of Antwerp. Every time when I enter a cell, I'm offered a coffee or a cup of tea. Humor. Gosh, how many jokes in prisons? Creativity. <laughs> you know, I came across that guy from Belarus, and he had in his cell small churches that he made out of his toothpaste. Poetry. Music. How many songs have been written in prisons? I feel ashamed eh, to bring a guitar, but it's just to honor the musicians in prisons. And I want to give you the very first song that, I've, that, that I learned from the children in the prison in Chile, if you don't mind. Niño, mi niño, eh, child, my child. I eh, want to express eh, that dream that the day may come with every child has the same amount of bread and milk to share. So, for the kids in prison. Niño, mi niño, vendrás en primavera, te traeré. Gurisito mío, lugar de madre, selvas, te daré. Aunque nazcas pobre, te traigo también. Se precisan niños para amanecer. Se precisan niños para amanecer. Niño, mi niño, tu niño y aquel niño todos van. 
Rueda que te rueda hacia la vida nueva llegarán. Cada niño un poco, todos comerán de la misma leche y del mismo pan, de la misma leche y del mismo pan. Niño, mi niño, el hombrecito nuevo llegará. Curicito feo, ñatita de glicina él tendrá. Y mientras él crezca, crecerán también. El lugar de todos será para bien. El lugar de todos será para bien. I've seen the beauty not only in the prisoners, but also in some guards and directors. I could tell you a lot of stories, but the last one, a few months ago, I'm, I came back from Chile. And you may remember the 27th of February earthquake. Well, there is a small town, Constitución, at the seaside. And at the moment of the earthquake, the director, he runs over to the prison and he says to all those inmates, you go home and you go help where need because none of you is sentenced to death. All of them left the prison and 10 minutes later, the tsunami finished the whole prison. When I left, 75% of the inmates had come back And they told me the gesture of that director means so much more to us than all those years in prison. I would love to take you to the Begeine Strata, but I have some snaps from uh, the Congo. You know, there is a funny thing. After the first book was, was published, I kept on receiving invitations to stay overnight in prisons. And I got one from uh, the north uh, of Kivu. And I'm locked up for about a month in the prison of Butembo and in the prison of Beli. The first prison is quite new. It was built in 95, and uh, you see four towers. Every one is a dorm, two for the men, and one for the female, for the women, except this one. This is the office of the director. I've seen him three times, I think, and most of the time he was drunk. Um, 60% of the inmates were never taken to court. When I arrived there, they hadn't seen a bit of food for more than one week. This is the kitchen. This is the bathroom. We had two toilets, but one um, didn't work anymore. When food made it into the prison, then we, we only had uh, fufu, eh? mandioc. The, you may notice this, this is one of the dorms, um, and actually then you, you notice that we have a quite modern uh, prison. In most of the prisons in Africa, you sleep on the floor. Here, not so. Um, these are like tombs, but since it's also an overcrowded prison, you have to share your bed with three or four other inmates. There was a um, <laughs> try of an escape. Um, One of the guys, for weeks, uh, he tried to cut these bars, um, was caught by the guards, and uh, you can't imagine all what they find to beat, to slam, they use it. And um, 
Aimé, as he was called, uh, when he was tortured, he mentioned his best friend, Claude. Well, the two of them, well, they ended up with a, a broken leg, a broken arm. Um, I would say it's quite common in prisons. After one month, I, this was the goodbye party. Uh, um, I was taken to the prison of Beni for two weeks. They hadn't seen one banana, no food in this prison. The prison was falling apart. 250 inmates. Um, I will go back um, four months later, and then there will be 412. No food, no water. This was supposed to be the water containers. Uh, most of the time, they are empty. It is so sad. When you see these families coming in, if they make it into the prison, because first they have to pay the guards, but if they make it into the prison, they bring these little bags with water. I would love to have a technician who can make you smell the toilets. At four or five meters, you can't stand anymore because the shit is literally running out. When I left the prison, the director, he was crying. He said, how can I change this situation? Every week, he lost two inmates. Two deaths. <laughs> and I came home with a huge project of $248,000. And my friend said, you can do it on your own. Let's start a foundation. And that's how Within Without Walls was born. Two main goals, fundraising to improve the conditions in the Congo, and now we are in Bolivia, we are in Brazil, we are in Madagascar. Um, and a few guys, a, a few um, volunteers from here said, we want to give a helping hand. We put the first stone and we kept on building, and one year and a half later, we were able to hand over a, a new prison. Still not fancy, but at least with running water, with toilets. Next week I'm off again, because on the, the ground where we, you saw the old uh, prison, we are building now a, f a female center, because if you are a prisoner, that's one thing, but you are when you are a woman in prison. So we are building a female center and a center for the minors. You see, there will always be prisoners, and there will always be people on the outside. They are big professors, and I know it's a delicate issue. Huh? We try to stand for the victims as well. A few years ago, I got a phone call from a woman and she said, do you want to give me company? I want to pay a visit to the man who killed my sister because I don't want to live the rest of my life with that anger. I can tell you it was an amazing visit for her, for him, for me. Well, that woman, she helped us to found Within Without Walls and she says, the way that we invest in a good prison system, it's also a benefit for us victims. I wish you all a very free future, a very free life. But if it turns out differently, if you get into a prison, I would be very pleased to visit you.